In the last tutorial, we covered how to use the power trace within Corel, as well as its limitations, one of which is vectorizing low quality images. This tutorial is going to cover one of the ways to vectorize a low quality image. I have a small low quality image on my page. An image of this size and quality is very common for you to receive from your customers. If we stretch this out, you can see that it is a pixelated mess. If we were going to try and run this through the power trace, it looks awful. There's no way that we would want to use this ugly mess. If I have an image of this quality that I need to vector, what I do is I will print this out on my regular desktop printer as large as I can on an 8.5 by 11 piece of regular paper. Then I put a piece of vellum or tracing paper over it and with the help of a light box and some Sharpies, I will trace it out by hand. Here is what I end up with. You can see that I didn't ink the bubbles or the freckles because I will end up making those in Corel Draw since they're perfect circles. So after I've inked the image, I will scan it in at at least 150 DPI and then I import that scan image into Corel. And now you can see that I have a high quality image. If I zoom in, you can see that it's pretty good. However, there's a little bit of room for improvement. When I'm selected on my picture, you can see on my property bar that next to the trace bitmap option, there is an edit bitmap. If I click on this, it's actually going to open Corel Photo Paint, which is uh, very similar to Adobe Photoshop. Since Action Illustrated is primarily a vector graphic company, I don't use Corel Photo Paint very often. However, if you are a direct to garment or sublimation printer, this is a program that would be worth your time to learn and it does come with your Corel Draw Graphics Suite. For this project, we're going to spend a short time in Corel Photo Paint. First, I'm going to use my crop tool to crop the image. Just draw a box around my image using the crop tool and then double click to crop. Then I'm going to make my blacks darker and my white whiter. I do that by going to image, transform, threshold. It will bring up my threshold options. The presets are just fine so go ahead and hit OK. You can now see that my blacks are blacker and my whites are whiter and practically all the grays have been eliminated. So now I just close Corel Paint by clicking on the X in the upper right hand corner. It will ask me if I want to save changes to bitmap in my Corel file. Hit yes. And now we're back in Corel Draw with our new edited image. So we can run this through the power trace within Corel just like we were doing in the last tutorial. So trace bitmap, outline trace, clip art. If you get this error that says your image is too large, just hit reduce bitmap. And now it's going to make this dog into vector art. You can see that it does a pretty good job. If I zoom in on the face, we want to check to see if there's any odd details. And if we wanted to, we could adjust the detail and the smoothing. Make sure that you have the remove object overlay, the remove object overlap deselected. Let's go ahead and check our color tab. We have three colors. We're going to go ahead then and merge the dark black or the dark gray and the black together, which will leave us with two colors, which is what we want. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now we have them as vector. I'm actually going to put this vector image on top of my original JPEG and line it up and size it. I can use my wireframe to see the picture underneath my design. 
And now, using my ellipse tool, we're going to go ahead and make the bubbles and the freckles. While I am making these, I'm going to go ahead and hold down my control button so that they're perfect circles. I'm going to start by making the black larger circle. Then I will take this circle and copy and paste it. That will create a circle right on top of the first one. Then I hold down my shift button and use my corners to proportionally size it down. And this is going to be my white circle. I'm using my keyboard shortcuts, control C to copy, control V as in Victor to paste. So I don't have to keep making my circles over and over again. I can just keep copy and pasting these. I can even take two at once, copy and paste them. For something like this where it is a perfect circle, I just think it takes less time then inking it out yourself, in which case then you'd have to clean up all of your little vector shapes that weren't perfect circles in here. Then it takes just to make them in Corel like we are doing. I'm going to copy and paste this one right over here. The reason I'm doing this in my wireframe mode is so that I can see my vector and the photograph underneath it at the same time. Now, for my freckles, I want them all the same size, so I am going to make one freckle. And then copy and paste it to make the other freckles. Once again, control C to copy, control V as in Victor to paste. If I want my freckles on both sides to match, I will take all five of my freckles and copy and paste them, then drag them over to the other side and mirror them horizontally. Let's go back to enhanced view. Now let's adjust our color here. Let me go ahead and ungroup my dog. I'm going to go ahead, I just made him pink real quick to make sure there was no other black shapes laying on top of him. We're going to make him a Pantone black. And now I am going to use my eyedropper, the Attributes eyedropper, to color in my freckles and my bubbles. 
The reason I use the attributes eyedropper over the regular color eyedropper is because this uh, one is also going to remove the outline just like my original objects over here. So fill no, fill no outline is what we want. So I'm just taking the color from my design and applying it to my created shapes. Anytime I need to change the color, I reselect my pick tool and then my eyedropper again, which will give me the eyedropper again where I can come in here now to make things white. So just clicking on my pick tool back on my eyedropper tool will reset it. If I'm going to be vinyl cutting this, I need to deal with my overlapping bubbles. So I'm just going to use my upper black circle to trim out of my lower white circle with the trim button here so that it cuts it away. And then I would weld these two bubbles together. That process has been covered. Here I don't need to trim anything here, but I'll weld these in our tutorial covering tips for vinyl cutters. So we'll go ahead and weld these two together. That's going to eliminate any overlapping lines if I am going to be vinyl cutting this. Now, if I want to spend some time cleaning this object up, I would just do that by clicking on an object and going to my shape tool, which then allows me to come in here and like delete nodes to adjust them, clean them up, smooth them out. I tend to spend most times on faces and hands of characters, but maybe something like this too, where this is clearly supposed to be like a straight line across. We have a little something there then I would be able to come in here and just delete out a whole bunch of nodes at once, which will make it a nice smooth line. The amount of time I spend cleaning this image has a lot to do with my final output, whether or not I'm uh, vinyl cutting this and if I'm getting paid for my time. I could easily take an hour of my time getting in here and making this guy perfect. And if I am wooing a big client or printing a really large run, or this is going to be cut really large for the side of a box car or something like that, I might spend that time. However, if I'm doing a favor for a friend or printing this really small on some promotional product, five minutes will do. The last thing I'm gonna do is color this design. Just using my pick tool, I select my objects and click on a color. I wouldn't necessarily use my eyedropper tool in this case as my bitmap image is not going to be Pantone colors. And if I'm screen printing this, then I would definitely need to be using Pantone colors. We can just find a brown similar. And that is how you can take a very low quality image and make it into a vector graphic within CorelDRAW.